Runaway school lunch debt suggests that we are not providing free or reduced lunch to every kid who needs it. Prominent election deniers get into the race to lead the Colorado Republican Party. A city manager is praised for 20 years of service and then fired without explanation. People are snatching up tickets to see the rapper Nelly in Boulder. Only one problem. I hope word gets out and they, they, they know what to expect so I don't have... I don't know if the crowd booed me when I'm, when I'm not the rapper. That's tonight on Next. No, not that Next. This Next. Thousands of kids across the metro area don't have money to pay for school lunch. They aren't going hungry, but it's costing districts hundreds of thousands of dollars. Our Cole Sullivan explains why this long-time issue should change next year. At McAuliffe International School, lack of lunch money is adding up. Already this school year, students haven't paid more than $13,000 at the cafeteria checkout counter. Sometimes, you know, it's just a few dollars a family owes, and sometimes it adds up and can be quite a bit, um, and add up quite to be quite a bit for school districts. Data from Denver Public Schools shows families owe more than $700,000 so far. At Jeffco Schools, this year's unpaid lunch money counts for $300,000 in debt. I think having any debts are, are stressful. Um, and having it with your schools where you're, you send your child every day is even more stressful. Ashley Whelan um, works at Hunger Free Colorado. She says it isn't kids scheming for a free meal, districts do feed them even when they can't pay, but a broader issue of money, hunger, and stigma. And that they're not paying their lunch money because their their families are facing other issues or, the, or their, the child is facing an issue, like being ashamed or not wanting to show kids that they're Poor. Over the years, districts have tried to get families to pay their lunch bills. Some still have policies that allow them to contract with debt collectors. But Whelan says right now, pardon the pun, most just eat the cost. They won't have to starting this fall. Every kid should have the option to do well at school, especially with having enough food to eat. And that's something that we've addressed here in Colorado starting next year. Under Proposition FF, which voters approved in November, no child will pay for lunch which means no more lunch debt for schools like McAuliffe. And then the state will pay the difference for all meals that, so that every kid can get the food they need to learn. Willem was part of the team that advocated for that ballot measure. It won't solve the district's debt problem this year, but assuming the districts opt in next year, she expects it'll cut down on lunch debt and mean fewer kids will go hungry. Here's why, because when all meals were free during the height of the pandemic, she says there was a 20% increase in hungry students in the lunch line. Kyle. It's so interesting because we've got that experiment right in front of us, you know, to be able to compare and contrast that to the current system that for one reason or another might not be catching all these kids. Exactly. She says, look at those two years during the pandemic where it was all paid for. Compare that to the lunch debt we've already seen so far this year, the 700000 in DPS alone. And you can see why she believes FF is going to solve that problem. Cole, thank you. If Colorado Republicans were not satisfied with the field of election deniers already running for state party chair, there are a couple more getting into the race, including indicted Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters. Peters is going to run for state party chair while she awaits trial on felony charges tied to tampering with election systems. When she announced her campaign on a conservative podcast, she promised that she'd try to get rid of the electronic voting machines. Former state representative Dave Williams of Colorado Springs is also newly into this race. He's the guy who claimed without evidence that more than 5,000 dead people voted in Colorado. He spoke at the election deniers rally at the Capitol with my pillow guy, Mike Lindell. Williams lost a GOP primary for Congress after a judge ruled that he could not appear on the ballot as Let's Go Brandon. And former state senator Kevin Lundberg is also in the running for GOP chair. He said the 2020 election was stolen, claimed the 2022 election was plagued by widespread fraud. Lundberg said he also wants to ban electronic voting systems. Candidates already in the race for GOP chair include former congressional candidate Eric Odlin, who said the 2020 election was absolutely rigged, and former congressional candidate Casper Stockham, who said he felt it was rigged, and conservative Christian activist Aaron Wood, best known for opposing drag shows and opposing the celebration of Halloween. Denver-based Dominion Voting Systems is asking a judge right now to rule against Fox News Channel even before their defamation lawsuit goes to trial. Court filings show that Fox News hosts and newsroom leaders knew that the election rigging claims were false, that there was no evidence of widespread election fraud. But the network kept bringing on guests to push these theories that even internally they called, quote unquote, nuts. Court filings show that Fox executives were worried that telling their viewers that election rigging claims were lies would cause those viewers to change the channel to more fringe competitors like Newsmax. 
Dominion is suing for $1.6 billion. The city manager in Decono was recently recognized for decades of service to that community and then abruptly fired at the end of the same meeting. Covered hundreds of public meetings, never seen what went down at Decono City Council one week ago tonight. Longmont Times Call was the first to report on this. So the meeting opens with Mayor Adam Moorhead presenting City Manager A.J. Euchert with an award, recognizing him for 20 years of service to the community. I'm going to lead off. It's not on the agenda, but I have a, uh, a presentation for A.J. Euchert, our City Manager, um, who works uh, very hard for the city, uh, you know, work nights, weekends, and... Uh, gives his all. So congratulations, AJ, on, on 20 years of service. Uh, I know we all appreciate your hard work and dedication to the city. And Well, I wouldn't say they all appreciate it because less than an hour later, the dude was out of a job after a surprise motion from the mayor pro tem, Catherine Whitman. Council reports, news, views. I have a motion to make. I make a motion to terminate employment of the city manager effective immediately. I second. Boom, minutes later, city manager fired on a four to two vote, no discussion as to why. The people who voted against the firing tell us they have no idea why. And we have not heard back after we reached out to the city council members who voted to abruptly can the city manager. Somebody knows, if it's you, get in touch. So when I heard that uh, Nelly was playing a show in Boulder next month, I was like, I, I, I remember a lot of his music. And apparently so do other people, because the Nelly concert went up on, on Nelly's website, and those tickets went fast. One problem. It's not that Nelly. Steve Steger has the story. Uh, it's a mix of, like, house music, and we do, like, more indie rock. Local Boulder band Santa Ana Rodeo is going to rock the Fox Theater on March 10th for a good cause. So it's a little thing that we got put together through a um, fraternity event, um, all for charity. $15 tickets that sold lightning fast. Hey, must be the money. A lot of, like, 20 left. Yeah. Just like, wait, we want some of our friends. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all because of a promotion that made their co-headliner appear to be a big deal. How'd you guys get Nelly to sign up for this thing? Appear um, to so be. Our lead guitarist, his roommate is Nelly. Um, so we played, yeah, Matthew Nelson, Nelly for sure. <laughs> Normally I just have people call me Matthew unless Matthew. it's, uh, yeah, unless they're, like, referring to my DJ persona. Got it. What, so your DJ persona is Nelly, but not that Nelly, <laughs> not, not the, not the rapper, no. not the rapper, but a local DJ. He says his friends always tease him about the name, but never this serious of a mix up, <laughs> a mix up that fooled these ticket sites that advertise this show featuring college kids as a Nelly concert, even used Nelly's picture. Then the date popped up on the St. Louis rapper's actual website. We checked his website. Just like you literally just look up Nelly. And that's the first thing that comes <laughs> up. Yeah. And then we go to like tour dates and it's like March 10th. Boulder were like, oh, okay. uh, they were like, good gracious. That's bodacious. So we were like, OK, wait, this might be a problem because there's going to be a lot of like middle aged women that are going to be disappointed by <laughs> Nelly not showing up. The entertainment company that runs the Fox Theater told us today that ticketing bots didn't distinguish a subtle difference. Not that this Nelly is a white kid from Minnesota, but that his name uses two European L's with little swooshes. And the bots, even Nelly's own ticketing bot, got confused. Now DJ Nelly is trying to get the word out and prepared to improvise. What do you do if you get on stage and there's like a raging mad crowd that's like, I want Nelly now? I think I just have to start playing Nelly. <laughs> that seems like what you should do. Uh, so this might be the only time in my journalism career that I say this, but I reached out to Nelly's team this morning and they never got back to me. Uh, the concert's been removed from the schedule there and at a bunch of other places. The Fox Theater Entertainment Company sent an email to folks who bought tickets with DJ Nelly's bio and info on how to get refunds if they thought that they were going to see the real Nelly. They were going to go down, down, baby, and see Nelly. Sure, yeah. They, then, then that kid shows up, and they're like, what? I, I, love, I love this so much. So Nelly's own website posted this because it couldn't tell the difference between, was it this, this Nelly, Nelly and, and this Nelly? And that Nelly. Yep. That's the difference. Yep. That's the, it's the difference. The swoosh. The little, the little symbol. Here's and the that's, deal. That's a, way, that's a great way to avoid copyright yeah. infringement, if you ask me, too. Here's the deal. Even though you've done the story, even though they've changed their website, 
somebody is going to show up to that show thinking that they're going to see the rapper dressed in red with a St. Louis Cards hat on and everything else, and they're going to be so surprised. Wouldn't it be nuts if like, they become an overnight sensation because so many people show up and this kid's that good and they're like, hey. If, or, or if the real or Nelly, if the real shows, Nelly up. shows up to the show. If the real Nelly shows up, can you call Nelly's people tomorrow too? I'll try. Okay, cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. So you stepped up last week in a big way for some Coloradans who are putting their lives back together after they go through the trauma of a home fire. I want to thank you for raising more than $12,000 for Our Front Porch. That's a nonprofit that picks up where the Red Cross's well-known process leaves off. And they walk with people for weeks or months to help them with insurance claims and plan their rebuild. They even offer trauma, or therapy rather, for the trauma of surviving the fire. Your word of thanks microgiving campaigns have raised more than $10 million, including $12,000 last week. If you have a suggestion of a nonprofit or even just a tough issue in our community that you'd like to see us work on together, email me at next at 9news.com. Environmentalists say millions of abandoned oil and gas wells are leaking greenhouse gases. Researchers in Colorado might have a solution. A late addition to the Denver mayor's race. He missed the deadline, but it's cool because he's not human. And it's an ode to one of Colorado's most proudly weird places. The waterfall or the tower or the gorilla. We'll look at a Casa Bonita art show next. Colorado legislators are looking at a possible solution to greenhouse gas emissions from millions of abandoned oil and gas wells across the country. It's called biochar. It's a type of charcoal that's made by burning organic materials at very high, high heat. Researchers at Colorado State have looked into its ability to capture carbon from the atmosphere and to filter greenhouse gas emissions. Well, now Democratic state legislators have drafted a bill asking those researchers to study whether biochar could be used to plug up old oil and gas wells and stop the release of gases from them. Environmental advocates say it could be a big tool to combat climate change. EPA estimates that there are more than 3 million of those abandoned wells across the U.S., and about two-thirds of them have not been plugged. If this bill passes, it would require researchers to provide a final report by early next year. Hey, may I make a recommendation? I want to point you to something that we did not write, but I think it's worth your time. As if there weren't enough mayoral candidates to hear from, here's the new guy. Our partners at Colorado Politics created him. This is AI candidate Taylor Wood. Colorado Politics reporter Ernest Lunning created the AI candidate and has used the predictive text algorithm to ask him all of the questions that we put on the 9 News candidate survey, which is on 9news.com. Most of the AI candidate's answers are vague and wishy-washy, so just like a real mayoral candidate. If you want to weird yourself out or just read what a computer thinks people want to hear about public safety, homelessness, and the outgoing mayor, you can find a link to Ernest's article on the next Facebook page. And then, for the real human takes, just as wishy-washy and vague, go to 9news.com for the responses to our candidate survey. We'll also, we'll also be hosting extended one-on-one -on -one conversations with all 17 mayoral candidates over the next few weeks. We begin tomorrow with Kelly Bruff, longtime political insider, making her first run for elected office. Barring something else going on, we expect that conversation with Kelly Bruff to air tomorrow on Next. We've interviewed a couple of the mayoral candidates who announced their campaigns here on Next. You can see those interviews in full right now on the Next YouTube channel and 9 News. Were you out and about today? Especially up in the foothills, you probably felt and heard the strong winds. 40, 50, 60 mile per hour gusts. There's going to be a brief little lull only to increase yet again tomorrow morning. 31 mile per hour gusts around Blackhawk, off to Boulder and Broomfield too. Stronger up in the mountains. And this high wind warning will continue until lunchtime tomorrow. Again, the foothills all the way up into Wyoming will be under that. And we could see wind gusts, especially across uh, the higher peaks, upwards of 80 miles per hour. Once we kind of get rid of those winds, we'll be watching our next storm system push in. That one will be bringing us some snow by the middle of the week. Tonight, temperatures falling to the 20s and 30s here for the metro area. Still pretty mild up in the mountains tonight, too. Tomorrow, it will be the warm before that next storm system rolls in. 50s here for the urban corridor. Some areas in southeastern Colorado close to 70 degrees in February or in the 30s up in the mountains. But as this storm system kind of charges into Colorado, it'll hammer the high country with not only snow, but again, some pretty gusty winds, too. We have winter storm warnings in red. Those will go into effect tomorrow and then continue through late Wednesday night, even some areas into Thursday morning. Right now it looks like about one to two feet of snowfall stacking up. We have the advisories in place right there around I-70 for about five to ten inches around Vail, Aspen, and then you can see the winter
winter storm watch. In effect for the Front Range foothills, even Fort Collins included in that for about five to eight inches. Here in the city, we are not under any advisories, not yet anyway. Looks like about two to four inches coming our way during the day on Wednesday. It's cold. We dropped sub-zero early Thursday morning, but bounce back 50s and sunshine for the weekend. An art show fueled by nostalgia and pink paint. There's 84 pieces of Casa Bonita art in here. Handmade tributes to the restaurant that makes hearts flutter and stomachs churn. Next. What's your favorite memory of Casa Bonita? The Sopapillas, the Cliff Divers, Black Bart's Cave, a vague rumbling feeling in your insides for days? With the reopening around the corner, some artists are already getting art lovers thinking about the very pink restaurant in Lakewood. It's really fun and people are so creative. This is our sixth annual art show. I'm Betsy Rudolph and we're here at the 40 West Arts Hub. Once a year we have a Casa Bonita art show. It's uh, all art celebrating Casa Bonita. If you haven't heard yet, it's reopening in May. What it is, is the pink represents Casa Bonita, and this is the waterfall. So it was a nice way for artists to, you know, be drawn to the place. They just moved recently to the 40 West Arts Hub, which is smack dab in the middle of the Casa Bonita Plaza. There's sculptures, there's paintings, there's ceramics, there's embroidery, and it's all just junk. It's, this is a VHS tape. These are forks. It's such a great topic. It's so easy to find, you know, something to, you know, the waterfall or the tower or the gorilla. You walk in and it's, you see sort of the spread of art and everybody just sort of smiles. We had submissions from all over the country, California, Illinois, Georgia, Maryland. We got, I think, 137, and we accepted 84 pieces. I think it goes to show you, we all, we all could use a smile, and there's no thinking too hard. It's just, just enjoying yourself, and really just being excited about the next piece. And even if you haven't been, it's great. And it'll whet your appetite for May when it opens. I love that last one with the opening soon sign. Rudolph says the show will be up for two more weekends. She's already planning for next year's show. So apparently the idea of bringing Nelly to the Not Really Nelly concert in Boulder might not be as impossible as we thought. Next year's feedback explains how. So what I don't know about pop culture is a long, long book, but a next viewer on Twitter who goes by the Blue Cell reach out after Steve Stager's story about the Nelly concert featuring Not Really Nelly to say, have Steve reach out to Coach Prime. He probably has Nelly on speed dial. So I Googled and I found out that these two guys go all the way back. I should have known this. So Deion Sanders, 1994, releases the song Must Be the Money, and then Nelly grabs some of that for his 2009 song, Ride With Me, and they still keep in touch. This is them working out a couple years ago. Guys, this could happen. Coach Prime could bring Nelly to Boulder. See you next time.